everyone, welcome back. It's Christina Gibbon, The Artist Pod, and today we'll be talking about how to draw a hamster. As always, I'm using a Wacom Intos Pro tablet and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Alright, so um, here is the sketch of the hamster. So he's got some pink on his hands and feet, nose, um, and then tan and white. Um, some pink in the ear too. So we're going to get started with the, um, like the tan color. Um, so down here by the nose, typically you have kind of this squiggly fur. Um, you see it on a lot of like smaller animals and then it kind of elongates out once it gets going. Um, right, so we're just going to have like a strip that goes straight up. And then it's loose hair and then going to have it come straight to the edge of the, of the eye. Right, and you can see over here it pushes in a little bit, that's fine. And then on the back side of the eye, we need to be careful because the eye itself, their, their eyes kind of bulge. <laughs> so um, the eye would be in front of the fur on the back side, and then down this way, right, it, it turns over and starts going under, and then the same thing applies. Right, so this step is kind of just a, a sketching step. Um, secondary sketching step, I guess to get the, the basics of like where the hair is and stuff down, the direction of the fur and, and all that sort of fun stuff. Um, you know, and then off that main line, you, you start kind of angling it, right? So you have that angle coming off. So that all kind of makes sense. You can see how much longer the hair is now. <laughs> down by the, um, uh, nose tends to be the shortest on all animals, right? And then we have kind of this fur pushing in front of the ear. Um, now, I'm playing kind of the rest of this by ear, right? Like, you know, we have, we're going to have um, fur coming off the back that's tan. I didn't really mark exactly where the changes in the, in the fur were. So... I'm going to create a section of white, and then we'll have more tan coming down. We'll have it come down for a little bit. All right, pushing off, being, being tan fur. And then, and you know, the nice thing about hamsters, right, is this is all completely up to you. Hamster could be completely white if you don't have to worry about fur color changes. Um, it's just, you know, it's whatever you want it to be. So that's also kind of nice. Okay. And then, you know, we do the same thing on the other side. So right here, we angle this at the corner of the eye. Always do that. And then kind of angle out. You have the eye and it comes up and over. Again, being careful by the eye, especially hamster eyes. I mean, all eyes really, because we're drawn to eyes. Uh, pun intended. I mean, it wasn't, but it should be because all puns are good puns, right? Um, so, you know, we, we're at humans, animals, like we look at eyes first. It's, it's just what we do. Um, and so you want the eyes to really like be nice and, and sort of clean for that purpose. Nice, clean edge. Um, anywhere where the fur is pushing into it, like this side, doesn't matter. Um, it's just kind of where that wouldn't be happening, that it becomes much more necessary. Um, and with with the hamster eyes, right, the eye being in front is just certainly necessary. Okay, so, um, now on this side, we'll have that coming down Right, it comes over, and then we'll have maybe a little bit here, and then maybe a little pushing back in down here. Again, this is all whatever, you know, because however I want it to be. And I'm going to trade some of that off. Um, yeah. So I'll finish out the rest of this tan, and I'll be right back. So then we'll get the white 
white is I always do kind of an off-white um, there's a, some pinkish blended in here too but the white just kind of picks up where the um, pan left off right so we have the hair coming down in between where it comes to the edge here right it is an edge so it would come to that edge um, and then kind of stop and we'll have a little bit pushing in but I am also going to have pink here so we'll really be lessening that off if, of course that's if I remember sometimes I don't especially once I draw on it and I'm like oh it's totally fine that's what I get for having um, ADD I get very forgetful on these things sometimes all right same thing here and then pushing to the edge comes straight off the nose so anywhere where the it would end right I end it and then otherwise we continue it on and there'll be some shadowing too. Um, right, so just continuing that on. And then we have the chin. Right, and this also has some extra flump to it. Flump, fluff. It's fine. Whatever. It gets it. Okay, so the chin. Flowing into the rest of this, and then we'll have some um, shadowing down here, but really, it'll be a little hard to tell in the sketch because it's not exactly um, adding highlights and shadows yet. The, the, that'll all add in once, you know. We have highlights and shadows adding in. So I'm having the fur kind of bunched together in the center of the chest. You see it sometimes with animals. Um, just, you know, the way things go. And then pushing out, you know, on the rest of this. So um, other than the nose, hands and feet, and a little bit of the center of the ear. The rest of this is in white, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out this white, and I'll be right back. Now, for the pink. I mean, nose and mouth, pretty straightforward, right mouth. I'm just gonna, we'll draw across like this, be fine. Um, nose, Right, we're gonna come down. There's like a typically a line in the middle of the noses, so I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap for that. Come down, there should be what I didn't do <laughs> is underneath their nostril, right? So that's still nose here. It's fine. I did kind of indicate there'd be some pink. I'm gonna have some pink through here, some pink through here. Okay. And then ears, we're gonna have some pink. And then kind of leaving a gap where the hole in the ear would be. So as it's going in, fading that out. Same thing over here, pink, until it would fade out, and it would fade out um, sooner over here than it would on the right side, because I've already decided my light source, and my light source is coming from above and to the right, um, so, you know, and then the hands, right, so you have the individual fingers with little, like, claws coming off, I'm going to do the claws in a flesh color too individual fingers, the claw coming off. So I'm gonna get the pink done. Um, finish this out and then I'll be right back. Um, also I should note, right, like the white should push up higher than this, so. Um, 
I'll be leaving a gap for the pink for the white to go, but okay. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be right back. Like I said, light source coming from above and to the right. So um, I'm gonna start with the pan. Make sure I'm on the right layer. And so all ledges are in shadow. So I'm also gonna have a little bit of this in shadow, even though it's not technically an edge. And then of course this is in shadow where it's coming up on that edge there. It's okay to not have like nice clean lines. Um, I'm also not, you know, when I talk about shadow versus highlight, the difference is I'm not putting full pin pressure and I'm putting less lines. So um, that's how I'm doing that, how I'm creating the shadow. And then, you know, through here, all this is in shadow because it's on the edge. On this side, the shadow would be deeper, right? So, um, their, their faces are pretty wide, which is interesting because they're, you know, prey animals. So, um, usually that's not necessarily the case, but uh, their faces will pick up more highlighting than typical animals like this. Oh, what just happened there? I think it picked up my pinky. <laughs> um, so it'll probably have more highlighting than I'm giving it on this side. But I'm giving myself sort of a nice long runway. Um, going to the the back edge of the eye, which I'm probably gonna have to have on, yeah, to make sure I line this up right. And then, you know, on this side, this would be highlight on the edge of the eye. I'm just getting this in because the eye is so important. I wanna make sure the edges are clean-ish. I don't have to be perfectly clean, but cleaner than if I was just casually like bopping along. Right, so you have this whole like backside that slowly tapers off. Um, foreheads will have the most light because there's typically less blocking them. And so typically on an animal, the forehead is gonna have the most light. But just like, you know, with the edge over here, right? All edges in shadow, so that includes the hair on top. Just like more pin pressure, um, Lines can also brighten something up, so just making sure not to put too many lines to accidentally do that. But we have some leeway to get there. It's a lot quicker once you've added shadow in to add highlighting, but I don't typically do it that way because that actually takes more time overall. Right, so all of the tan back over here, so this little section that's tan, and then down here where I kick it back in will be shadow. Because it's, you know, you're solidly on the back side. And then over here, you know, you're gonna have, I can see where I have an indentation. That'll be shadow, right? be a little bit of shadowing coming down here right in this section so I created the indent so presumably I did that for a reason I'll change my line directions when I'm sketching it'll indicate to me that there's like an indent or something else happening and then of course under here it's going underneath so that's in shadow you'd have a little bit of highlight there and then on this edge again right everything in shadow so where she'd be there. Um, I'm also gonna have just a little bit of the tips of the hair here. Not much, and I'm probably gonna push significantly into it, but there would be some, just some shadowing. And then along both the front and the back of the ear here. Over here, that shadow on the back is going to be deeper because this is away from the light source. On the other side, it's towards the light source, but 
um, it's you know all edges and shadows. So mm, there might be some shadowing right through here where that face is dipping down, but I usually put highlight under the eye. So this is a play by ear scenario right through here. In fact, I think that probably would not be accurate quite there, but that's all right. That's all right. We'll see how it looks. I can blend it. The more the shadowing is there, the more I can blend it. Okay, now, if I'm right, I'm just going to give a little bit more here where it's starting that indention and it turns to white maybe a little bit here where there's another indent but most of that's going to be played out with the white yeah okay so then the rest of the brown or the tan um, is going to be highlight um, and the way I'm going to blend the shadows in with the highlight is I'm going to add more lines, right? I'm not going to put more pin pressure because the lines stay thin if I don't put more pin pressure um, and they thicken up when I do. Now down here, right, I clear this section. It's now blended in. So now I put full pin pressure. So it thickens up the lines. It does the same thing that adding more lines does. You can see that difference though. Um, so that's how I'm blending. So I'm going to get the rest of this uh, tan color in um, since the rest of it's in highlight and I will be right back. There we are with the tan. I might um, temper this out, but first I'm gonna get the white in and see exactly where we stand. It'll be easier to temper that. Tim temple, temper that out later. Um. Right. So the white, kind of the same thing, right? We're just looking at the shadows where they would be. So, um, you know, it'd be under here because you have. This is the cheek here, right? So you'd have some shadowing at the edge of the cheek because there's an, a distinct gap. And see how um, easy it is when I'm just sketching it, right? I can clearly see where I intended that to be because my line stopped. Um, that really does help when you're, when you're drawing because I don't really want my sketch lines in the way to determine that. Right, same thing over here. Now I'm gonna make it deeper on the on the other side, but same thing over here. Right, so faded pin pressure until it starts mixing in, which is roughly the same height as this side. Um, and then we can make some small adjustments, making sure that it looks nice and rounded. And we can make this a little deeper. Won't be so deep, but maybe a little bit. Um, the chin will have some highlighting, but I typically do chins all in shadow first, just because it's easier. Um, there's not a lot of space with the chin. That's why I do it this way. They typically um, are kind of jammed in, so it's just kind of easier to do it all in uh, shadow and then kind of add highlights from there. Right, so get the chin in, um, and then, right, I'm gonna have, I have some shadowing down in here, all of this, in fact, on his chest, because you'll have kind of a line where, um, the head is, running into the body, and so you're casting a shadow that way. Um, 
and that's going to deepen as it comes over just a little bit. Right, and you have kind of the chest meeting in the middle. So where that's happening, kind of all shadow. That's why I turned this back on as I needed to see exactly what I was about to do. <laughs> Right, so shadow all down in here. Um, we'll have some shadowing here, just where there's like a little bit of a bump, so it probably is a little bit here too, but I might undo that. I'm gonna say the, we'll have some shadowing just like I did in the tan. We'll do some shadowing through here as well. Um, started to do it right having some shadowing where the white and the tan meet in this section here because their bodies their bodies are kind of rolly <laughs> um they can be so you're gonna have some um rolliness to them probably not the right word but you know Um, of course, the back side, right, we already have the shadows built in here, so we would continue that on, although this will be a brighter shadow than the face, but for now we can do that whole back side in shadow to work that out. Um, yeah, see all of this really kind of would be in shadow down to where the hand is, but since I didn't sketch that in right, I need to make sure know what I'm doing. Because it's going to go into shadow as it, as it dips down to the body there. And then all of this, we'll say, connects in. And then, of course, we started adding shadows up here, so this would all kind of connect in, too. Um, you're going to have shadows over here as well. Even though this side starts turning back towards the light source, it is under the chin, so the immediate effect is that it's in shadow. Way up here. And over here you can almost see it, except most of this is going to be in shadow. I'm going to do this whole left side in shadow of the white. Um, and then down underneath, right where the arm is coming, and then it runs back into the body. Right, you'll have some shadowing continuing on from this point too, and you can kind of see it in the way I've drawn it. Again, those rolls kicking in. Before you have another bulge happening. And we can blend and adjust as needed, but for now it's easier to add highlight than to take it away, so it's easier to do it as shadow first and adjust from there. And then of course you're gonna have shadow down through here, down over the um, toes where that's coming down and rolling under, down on this back side for the same reason. All right, that's rolling underneath. And then potentially some highlight there. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish out the shadows. So I've done it on the right side. Left side I'm going to do fully in shadow um, and I'll be back before I start adding in the highlights. And I'm going to get this section into. Okay. Um, right, so The other thing I am going to do is deepen this shadow just a little bit. Not much because a lot of this is going to be in highlight on this side. And then I'll add some shadow in here where it connects in. Some of this might not stay. I just need to balance it out with the other side. Okay. Now, like before, right? Um, where it's connecting in, I'm going to do more lines. 
that includes connecting into the brown. More lines, not more pin pressure to brighten it up because I want those thinner lines so that doesn't stand out quite so much. It'll blend in better in theory. <laughs> All, always in theory. Alright, so. Yeah, so that's working. Alright, and then over here, I'm gonna again do more lines, not more pin pressure. as I flush out the cheek and then we'll do the chin. Well, we'll do both cheeks and then the chin. Right, so just brightening up where I think it needs it, allowing that to still go into shadow on the back side, and then tying this in to the top. Where you could have highlight butting right up to that shadow. And then just making sure that's evened out. Right. Okay. Now we'll have that same edge here where we're doing the more lines, not more pin pressure. And it does go into shadow at the front, right? So I am doing a bit of shadowing there. But it would be a, it would kind of taper that way. Kind of taper off. So, right as I bring this forward, I would allow that to kind of taper off into shadow there. And then all of this, of course, is highlight. You have the chin, where, again, more lines, not more pin pressure. You can see how quickly that brightens up once there's lines in place. You would have that coming all the way across the middle and then begin tapering off as it comes on this back side. Right, and then we're gonna have some of the hair coming down a bit on the chin. Now, I'm gonna do the same thing here, right? Blend this in, but this is highlight. Blend it in better than what I just did. A little overzealous with my pin pressure. That's what happens <laughs> when you get overzealous with your pin pressure. You can see what that's gonna do though, is you have the edge of the cheek in shadow that pushes straight into a highlight here and then you go back to the full highlight pin pressure as it leaves that and you can temper this off brighten it up um, and then just blend it now I'm probably, I'm gonna go ahead and get the highlights in the sections that I haven't drawn in. Um, and then we're gonna go back and sort out, because there will be some changes on this left side. So then we're gonna add in some highlights over there. But first I'm gonna get all of this in, um, and then I'll be right back. So we're going to do a little bit over here, just where I think this would be catching some light on this other side, right, just a little bit. We're going to have a little bit of a burst here. kind of on the back of the arm. 
starts coming out of um, highlight a little bit, out of shadow a little bit. It's one of those things. Right, and their bodies are kind of flat, so you have the the benefit of like um, the way the angle is hitting. So you'd have some highlighting potentially in places. Right, be brighter in some. You'd have the dip just like we do on the other side, and it pushing down just a little bit. Still shadowed, but. Potentially brighter in some spots. Right, just a little bit here. Just kind of doing it until it looks right. Yeah, actually, I think it kind of looks cute. I mean, hamsters do look cute, so that shouldn't be so surprising. Okay, so I'm going to temper off some of this so that the roll isn't so big. Do the same thing just a little bit here. There, you can still see it. it, has a happy little face, but not quite so deep. It's easy to temper off shadows, you just add just that little bit. Um, okay. Now, for the pink, oh, I gotta get the ears too. We can do that. We can do that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and draw all the pink um, in shadow, and I will be right back. So there won't be much sha um, shadowing, highlighting on the toes. There's probably going to be a little bit though. Um, but on the hands, certainly we're going to have some along the back of this hand for sure. And then it'll go down the individual fingers. Um, but not underneath, right? The fingers, it's rounding away. But we don't want any gaps down by where the back of the hand actually connects in. Right, all of this same is true, but now the angle is changing a little bit. And then on over to our last little guy. And I'm just filling in the gaps too as I go, because this wouldn't be wouldn't be like a distinctive gap like that. Fingers are probably all run together based on the pose. So there's one, and then the other one's kind of the opposite. You know, the, the fingertips would have more of the highlighting and the, and the claws. You'd have some coming down the back, especially where, you know, you have this connecting in, a little bit of highlight happening. Right, but it's not going to be receding back. Probably going to brighten up, I guess, the this hand a little bit too. I think it's this just balanced right. Right and then on over. Give these guys kind of a burst. So I'm going to do the same to the back of the hand here. Right. Kind of a burst coming up. Six out, comes forward. Basically be catching good highlight. Okay. And then the feet, not as much. Maybe have a little bit through here, but this would be much more faded. And of course the toe or the claw, I guess, where that's coming together. So just adding a few more lines, still very light pin pressure on the toe tips-ish, just to get the indication something's going on. It's a little different. Not much though. And then here, kind of the same thing, because its foot's kind of tucked under the body. So 
So like their claws maybe have a little bit of burst to them. And then the rest of it is not as much, just a little bit. Just a little bit. It's just a little bit brighter. We have five toes, right? So making sure we count that out right. Now the nose, it's a little bit different. You would have, you know, highlighting. It would go into shadow as it rounds down into the nostril. Right, so I'm just adding more lines, not more pin pressure. Bring this down, have some highlighting as it comes up this way. And then you'd have kind of a line in the middle so it would go into shadow and then get a burst of light on the other side. And then as we bring it over, it would start to fade again, being mindful that down into the nostril, that would fade down as it rounds down. Likewise, over here, you'd have a little bit of a burst, but that's fading away because it's turning off to the side. Now then you have um, the, the bottom lip, so it's just a little bit kind of in the middle here. And that's fading off. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I totally forgot to add the white on the ears. So we're going to do this real fast. Um, right. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little bit on the edge. Probably would be just a little bit on the edge. Maybe going into there, but otherwise not so much. So ears are turning inward. We're going to leave that as is. Do the same thing on this side. Right, just light pin pressure until we sort of blend it in. Oh, this one likely the edge is not gonna catch light because the edge of the ear is turned away from all light source possibilities. Although that's the edge, the interior, maybe a little bit. Right, you have the, the ears are what plops in over, so probably have that little bit um, happening kind of right through here, maybe a little bit of a burst before it goes back into shadow, just as it catches just a smidge. Yep. Okay. Now, we'll do the eyes and then the whiskers and we'll be done. Um, Okay, eyes. So I did something with the Japanese squirrel a few weeks ago that I liked. Um, now I had to because with that one, it had black around the eyes, so as opposed to this one, which does not. So I don't have to do this, but I thought it was an interesting effect. So I'm gonna bring this line down along the edge and then taper it off. And then on this side, kind of do the same thing. Have the line starting a little deeper in Oh, that's just all sorts of bad over here. Can't get my line straight. And then as we bring it over, I'll taper it off. So it's not as deep. And then I'm going to do kind of a teardrop shape. Maybe better than what I just did. Right, I still want it to kind of angle. And then over here, the same thing, but the teardrop shape is on the right side. 
and the angle's a little different because of the angle of the eye we're drawing on is different. So that's the light flare on the eyes. Um, now what I will often do when I do this, I'm just gonna fill this fully in, is I'm gonna take the um, lasso tool and I'm gonna mimic hair in front of the light flare just by doing these jagged strokes, right? Some quick jagged strokes come up over and just erase it out and it looks like hair is blocking the light which makes it a little bit um, in my opinion makes it look better okay and then the last thing the whiskers whiskers are pretty easy so you're just going to take it um, and move at your shoulder and just do a swipe light pin pressure right and as you come down you re-angle it down Ugh, that one is doing all sorts of funny things and then you kind of bunch them up, you know, you'll have a bunch together. Hamsters have, you know, lots of whiskers, so. Different lengths, different angles, everything's happening, and then whatever you do on one side, do on the other, right? So you have one coming up, so do up better, right? Just a swipe with your shoulder. That was a very overzealous whisker. And bring it on down. If I have a bunch down, then I need to angle on the other side a bunch down. If I have a bunch going up, then I need to do that, right? Like light pin pressure in both cases. Although I'm increasing it a little bit on the highlighted side. And then if I wanted to taper this out, I'm going to come under my whisker layer. I'm going to go back to this tan. So I'm going to taper that just real fast. So that shadow right here, fill this in just a little bit. Minimize how dark that is, and then do the same thing down here for this shadow. It's not as deep with the white, shouldn't be as deep with the tan. Still leave it, right? You can still see it. And then I'll taper it down here too, right? It's just drawing over it, lightening the shadow, but not so much that I get rid of the shadow. Just minimizing exactly how dark it is. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There is a hamster. All right, so that's how you draw a hamster. I hope that was helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.